Hey everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch on the Amazon Fire TV Stick and turn it into a retro gaming console. It's capable of playing systems like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Arcade, Nintendo 64, PlayStation, and much more. And for this video, I'll be using the latest 4K model Fire Stick, but this should work on other Fire Sticks out there as well, but the results and performance will vary due to the difference in the CPU and RAM specs. So even though the Amazon 4K Fire TV Stick is really small, it actually has quite a bit of power. It's powered by a quad-core 1.7 GHz CPU and 1.5 GB of RAM. And just for a quick comparison, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus has a CPU that runs at about 1.4 GHz, and the PlayStation Classic has a CPU that runs at about 1.5 GHz. So this little 4K stick has quite a bit of power for emulation. And in order to make this work, you're going to need a few different things. You're going to need a Bluetooth controller of some sort. I'm using an 8-bit Doe Bluetooth SF30 Pro, and this works really well. And there's other controllers out there that will work. I have heard that PlayStation 4 controllers are compatible, along with various other Bluetooth controllers that support Android, because this does use an Android operating system. And here's a quick look at the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K model. And these are normally selling for right around 49 bucks, but I was lucky enough to get this on Black Friday for about 34 bucks. And these do come with a small HDMI extension cable, and you may or may not need this depending on your TV setup. But what you will need is an OTG adapter with pass-through power, and you can use either a left or right angle. And you can find these on Amazon and eBay fairly cheap for right around 5 bucks, and they usually come in pairs so you get that left and right connection. And I'll make sure to post a link for these down below. You're also going to need a USB storage device of some sort, and I'm going to be using a SanDisk Cruiser 16GB USB 2.0 that's formatted in FAT32. And there should be other sizes and brands of flash drives out there that will work, but this is what I'm going to be using in this video. And to use that OTG adapter, it's very simple to do. We just plug it into the side of the Fire Stick, then plug in our USB flash drive. Then on the side of it, we're going to plug in our power to that OTG adapter right here. And right here, I'm using the left angle adapter. But like I said, you can use a right angle as well. But you will have to use the HDMI extension because it's going to make your USB flash drive stick out past the front of the Fire Stick. And these are normally sold in pairs, and I would recommend just getting a pair of them. That way you don't get these mixed up, which one's the left and right angle. And now it's time to head over to the computer and download some files on that RetroArch website. And if I scroll down to Android, I'm going to download the one that says just download by itself. Now I did try some other ones in here, but this is the only one that seemed to be compatible with the Fire Stick. So now you just want to go ahead and click on that, then save it to your computer wherever you choose to. After that's done downloading, you want to go ahead and open that up. And now it's time to go ahead and transfer this file to your USB flash drive. And for my USB flash drive, I have formatted this with FAT32, but there may be some other formats out there that work. But for now, I can confirm that FAT32 does indeed work. So my flash drive has already been pre-formatted with FAT32, and I've already added a couple test folders that include some games for testing purposes. So now it's time to go ahead and copy over the RetroArch application that we downloaded earlier, and paste that inside the USB flash drive. And you can put the RetroArch application anywhere you want on the flash drive, but it's probably going to be easiest to find if we just put that on the root of the flash drive. And already on my flash drive, I've included some games inside some of these folders. So if I go inside here to my test games folder, I've got various different systems, including Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, some arcade ROMs, PlayStation, and more. And just to let you know, none of these ROMs are going to be included. These are ROMs that I've already had backed up to my computer that I've added to folders on this flash drive. So if you're looking for ROMs to add, you're going to have to supply those on your own. And another thing I'd like to mention is with the folder structure, it doesn't have to be anything specific. You can actually put these games wherever you want because we can search the entire flash drive inside RetroArch to find where your games are located. So when you want to put games on here, you can organize these however you choose. And same thing goes for any BIOSes that may be needed for certain systems like PlayStation or MAME. You can go and put those BIOSes anywhere you want on the flash drive because we can use RetroArch to search for those BIOSes and assign the right directory inside the flash drive. So on my flash drive, I've added the RetroArch application along with various different test games and BIOSes needed for certain emulators. So my flash drive is all set up and ready to test out. Now it's time to go and plug it into my Fire Stick and then go ahead and plug that power in and get it plugged into my TV. Once we're inside the Fire Stick menu, we're going to head up to Settings and then we're going to scroll over to Controllers and Bluetooth Devices. And once again, I'm using the 4K Fire Stick, so your menu layout might be a little bit different if you're not using the 4K model. In the pair controller, it's super easy to do. As long as that controller is compatible, we select Game Controllers, then go down to Add New Game Controller, and that'll put that Fire Stick into pairing mode. Now it's time to go ahead and put your controller into pairing mode, and it should automatically pair. And to get the 8-bit Doe controller into pairing mode for Android, you push Start plus B at the same time, followed by the pairing button for about 3 seconds, and that should automatically pair it. Once you get the controller paired, it's time to hit that Back button and get back to your Settings menu. Now we're going to scroll over to My Fire TV. Inside there, we're going to select Developer Options, 
and turn on apps from unknown sources to the on position. And what this will do is allow us to install apps that normally don't come with the Amazon App Store, such as RetroArch. So after you're done with that, go ahead and head back to your home screen and go to the search bar. And now we're going to search for ES File Explorer. So as soon as you get ES space file, it should pull right up. And there it is, ES File Explorer. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And now that's going to pull up the app from the App Store. And now we're going to go ahead and select that and then download that and get it installed. Once we get that downloaded and installed, it's time to go ahead and open that application up. And this is what we're going to be using to explore the USB flash drive where that RetroArch application is located. And once I'm inside the ES File Explorer, I'm going to navigate up to the SD card and select that, which is actually my USB flash drive. Once I'm inside there, I'm going to select the RetroArch application and get that installed. So it's fairly simple to do. We're using ES File Explorer so we can explore the contents of the USB flash drive and get RetroArch installed. And once that's done, we want to go ahead and open the application. And the first time you open up RetroArch, it may have to download a base package. So it might look a little bit blank until that base package gets downloaded, but this is only going to happen the first time you use RetroArch. And the first time you use RetroArch, you're going to have to download some cores, which are actually emulators for various different systems like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, etc. So as you can see here, I've already downloaded various different cores, but if you select the download core option, you can go ahead and download whatever cores you choose. And there's a bunch of different cores you can choose from that are available, but keep in mind, not all these are going to be compatible. But that being said, I have tested quite a few of them and they seem to work okay. So now that I got all my cores downloaded that I want to try out, I'm going to go back and select load core, then scroll down to Sega and we're going to select the Genesis Plus GX. And with this simulator, I'm going to try out a Sega Genesis game. So now I'm going to go down to load content, then scroll down to storage by itself. And then the first folder here is going to be my USB flash drive. Then once I'm inside here, I can just explore the contents of my flash drive and find wherever the folder is that contains my Sega Genesis games. And again, you can put these games anywhere you want on the flash drive because we can explore the entire contents of the USB flash drive. So we'll go ahead and try out Vector Man 2 and just to let you know, Sega Genesis games seem to work great, but they're really not that much of a test because they're only 16-bit games, but we'll try out some more here in just a few. Now let's head back to the RetroArch menu and go to the second tab over, which is going to be settings. And inside here, we can change various different settings for all kinds of different things. Now, for some reason, the very first time I used RetroArch on my Amazon Fire TV stick, the latency was preset to about half a second behind. I'm not sure why, but it was. So I went inside here and I changed that to zero and everything was back to normal. And this was only an issue with the audio. The video was just fine. And to make this even weirder, I did try to uninstall everything and reinstall it. And the second time I installed RetroArch, I didn't have any issues with the latency. So this may or may not be an issue for you. Also inside the system tabs is going to be the directory. And if we select that, we can select where the system BIOSes are going to be for certain systems and emulators like PlayStation and MAME. So after selecting that, you just navigate to wherever the BIOSes are located on that flash drive and make that the new directory. You can also scan the directories for games, and I've done that already for the Sega Genesis and PlayStation. That way you don't have to load the games manually each time you want to play. So I'm going to go ahead and load that same game I was playing earlier, and because I don't have a core selected already, it's going to ask me which core I want to use. And I'm just going to use that same core that I was using earlier, which is going to be the Genesis Plus GX. And I tested a handful of Sega Genesis games, and they all seem to be playing pretty well. So I'd say the emulation is doing just fine for Sega Genesis games. For me to exit a game and get to the RetroArch menu, I have to push this button right here. But I'm using the SF30 Pro made by 8-Bit Doe, so the button mapping is going to vary depending on what controller you're using. But you can always change the button mapping if you want inside the settings directory and change that button mapping to whatever you prefer. Now I'm going to go ahead and quit RetroArch and go back to my home screen on my Amazon Fire TV. And you should be able to select RetroArch again when you're ready inside your recent selections. But if for some reason it's not there, we can always select that going to your settings up top and then scroll over to applications. So this can come in handy anytime you're having a hard time finding an application you just installed, just navigate to settings, then applications, then go down to manage installed applications. Then inside here, you should be able to find the application you just installed, and then you're gonna have various different options. You can go ahead and launch the application, you can delete that application, and various other different things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select RetroArch and go ahead and launch the application, and that'll open it back up. And now I'm gonna go ahead and test out a PlayStation game. And for a core, this is using the PCSX Rearmed Emulator. And the emulation for the PlayStation game seems to be fairly good. That frame rate stays nice and high, and it seems to play smooth. And in my opinion, I think it outperforms the Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus and the PlayStation Classic. And when I compared this with the PlayStation Classic, I was comparing this with a hacked PlayStation Classic that had RetroArch installed with the same exact emulator. And the performance on the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K was a little bit better. And just for reference, on the PlayStation Classic, the frames per second dropped about 55 at times. 
Then on the 4K Fire TV stick, the frames per second seemed to only drop to about 57, so the frames per second stayed a little bit higher on the 4K stick. And I've only tested about 10 games, but they all seem to have about the same results, and that frame rate stays nice and high. This particular game right here, Ridge Racer Type 4, was actually one of the worst playing games on the PlayStation Classic. In fact, so bad, I did a video showing the Super Nintendo Classic Edition playing the same game better. And playing this game on the 4K Fire Stick, it's even better. And now I'm going to try out an arcade game, Miss Pac-Man, and I'm going to be using the MAME 2003 Core. And for the arcade games, I've only tested a handful of games, and they all seem to be playing just fine. But to be fair, I've only tested games from the early 90s and older, but out of all those games, they seem to be playing well. So I'm just going to let the game play on for a few here. Okay, let's try out a Neo Geo game. This is World Heroes, which is one of my favorite Neo Geo games. So I tested out about five different Neo Geo games, and they all seem to play really well, except for this game right here, World Heroes. And I'm not sure what the deal is with this game, but when I play this on various different emulators, it usually struggles. As you can see, that frame rate is struggling a little bit, causing that game to be sluggish, but this 4K Fire TV stick has more than enough power for emulation, so I would say this is an emulator issue. Here is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo using the SNES 9X Core, and it seems to be playing nice and smooth. But even though it's playing nice and smooth, I have noticed that that frames per second is locked at 50, and I am indeed using an NTSC ROM, so I'm not sure why it's stuck at 50 frames per second. And I also recently tested this on my hacked PlayStation Classic with RetroArch installed using the same exact emulator and got the same exact results. And I would say overall, the Super Nintendo games seem to be playing great. Okay, now I'm going to try out a Nintendo 64 core. This is the Mupin 64 Plus, and this is usually my go-to emulator for Nintendo 64. But for some reason, it does not work well at all on the 4K Fire TV stick. But even though this emulator does not seem to work well at all, I did find out that the Parallel 64 emulator seems to work okay. And when I say okay, that means it's definitely not doing a great job, but I would say it's playable. And again, I do think this is an issue with the emulator because I do believe that the 4K Fire TV stick does have enough power to play N64 games fairly well. And I'm betting that there is some standalone emulators out there for the Nintendo 64 that do perform a lot better, and I'll be testing those out in the future. And just to give you a reference, I did test out some Dreamcast games using the Raycast core that's inside this RetroArch build, and the games did not play very well at all, making them pretty much unplayable. But when I used the standalone version of Raycast without RetroArch, the games seemed to play a whole lot better. So that could be the same case with the Nintendo 64 games. I just need to get a standalone emulator to get these games to play properly. And here in the near future, I will be making more videos showing off emulation for various different systems, such as the Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, and more. Okay, it's time for me to go. If you liked that video, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe, and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.